The challenge here is, I, I know that this place is called the South North Dialogue today, and it feels like a South, South Dialogue, which it should be, because at the end of the day, no forum internationally, at least the way I see it in, in my own research, is there any kind of power balance between the South and the North. And the point is that nobody, uh, the Global North institutions are not gonna see that power. It has to be taken from them. And that can only happen when there's coalition in the Global South and that's active, that power is actively built. Specifically, for instance, like I study the IMF. Uh, I did study the IMF and there are several people around the room I know who do this as well, so they can probably speak to it better than I can, um, among other things. But um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the IMF played a huge role in giving out loans because that's what it's supposed to do, right? To help out countries in balance of payments crises when they need financial support. And they're willing to step in as benevolent, as if they're extremely benevolent, um, people who want to help out people in need, but of course it always comes with strings, with strings attached. They tell us that they've changed their ways, that we don't ask for stringent loan conditions anymore, and that's not, simply not true. And in fact, we can see with the experience of Pakistan and Sri Lanka, they're still exacting, they're extracting the more than a pound of flesh. I, don't, I can't even count the pounds of flesh that they're extracting from Pakistan and Sri Lanka. And the terms have not changed. And the problem as it stems from, the way I see it, from what Carol said earlier, Carolina said earlier about the dollar hegemony. And the point is that as long as we're in a system which has the US dollar as the reserve currency in which we are doing business and trading and conducting finance, we are, we're, we're tied into the system. And even if it was, say, the Chinese renminbi that replaced it, I'm not saying it's going to, we're still going to be in a similar system as long as it's one national currency that's, that's dictating global trade and finance. It's always going to be on the terms of the country that for, for, of which that currency is. So for instance, through the IMF, through all kinds of channels, the US is basically imposing its own foreign policy objectives on the rest of the world. Um, and there has to be a way to end that. Now, back in the 70s, when uh, global leaders were talking about um, creating a new international economic order. That was kind of the point that they wanted to, they, they argued that the rules of the game are rigged and the promise of development of newly decolonized countries cannot be fulfilled under these rules. Of, under these rules. Well, here we are 50 years later, and I'm here to say the rules are still rigged. They, we, we tried our best, and after the default that Richard pointed out, which never is thought of as a default when the US went off uh, the dollar pegged to the gold, it's, it's a default, but they never talk about it as a default. Anyway, um, since then, we're in this new regime in which the rules are still rigged in, in the favor of those countries that have the year of the Fed or the US Treasury. And as long as that is the case, they will continue to impose their imperial wishes on the rest of us. And it means that the promise of development, uh, the promise of national policy space is never going to be fulfilled. So the challenge is for us to get together as hopefully people from the global south and friends from the global north, but the challenge must be how do we create this alternative vehicle um, to make sure that we are not dependent on the United States. Um, to put it very simply, I'm happy to talk more, but given that I'm surrounded by people who actually hate policy and I'm a lonely academic sitting in my ivory tower, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Thank you so much and I look forward to the conversations that are gonna happen now. <laughs>